coming down to a, a day to the fishery, taking us out of our comfort zone really. It's my first time I've ever been up to Christchurch. I've fished some other waters around Oxford before, but um, seeing the stamp of the fish in this one, all the nice black scaly ones, and they're just beautiful, stunning fish. This is a totally different challenge, a unique challenge for me. Um, completely different to what I would normally do. Super pressured. The carp are well known to be um, incredibly cautious and wary. So uh, it's going to be an interesting few days. There's a couple of obvious sort of snag trees in the water, and I've climbed, I've climbed the tree and looked down, and you know there's fish all around us. Really, you know they're tucked up underneath the bushes. Um, so I'm. I'm looking forward to uh, trying to get some of them to feed. I mean, you know, I, I want to get one out the edge. You know, that's what I've set out to do. I don't, I don't necessarily want to sort of swam out to the middle and fish sort of long. Um, so I'm just going to, I've chose just to fish one rod, fish really quiet, and uh, see if we can get one out from either side of this bush. But both sides are nice. I mean, I've climbed the tree, and uh, there's a golden spot to the left. Um, but. Um, some guys just walked up and gave us a load of advice and stuff like that and he said, oh, fish it from the right. So uh, I'm still yet to make my mind up. I'm going to climb the tree and see what side the fish, you know, let them tell me what side that I think is probably better. Um, but yeah, no, it's first initial impressions look good. There's a, a couple of really big fish under that snag, a uh, big common, a couple of really big mirrors. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get the rod in and get them feeding. Although I'd only been on the water for a matter of minutes, seeing a few fish browsing just up the margin seemed too good an opportunity to miss. So I donned the waders, grabbed the rod and headed off to investigate. So, what I've got is a little marginal area here with some silkweed. Fish are coming in, they're browsing on the silkweed. They've bowled out a couple of little areas. So I've got to walk along to this little alder that's peeking out of the margin there. You seem to be using that quite a lot. I'm gonna make my way along to there. Just lower the rigging on one of the little dinner plates. So I've got to be quite careful, it's quite soft here. I can see one of the fish further down the margins. Got to be really careful. I can see the spot now. Basically, I'm just going to lower it in now. There we go. That's it. Basically. Lure a carbon leader on. I'm just going to put the rod tip into the silt on the bottom, push it in, gently pay off some slack, bring the rod back to the edge. Now I've got to get out of here. Now come the crop on now, clay banks, making as little noise as possible. Set. Perfect. Right there. Just press on the floor for a minute. With the trap carefully laid, I set about getting the rest of my kit installed in the famous point swim. Just down the bank. Ben was laying a cunning trap of his own for those fish that he'd found in the snags just to the right of the swim.
With the afternoon drawing to a close, it was time to break out the leading rod and investigate the chunk of water in front of me. It was weedy, but thorough work revealed a nice area just over the back of a prominent band of Canadian pondweed. Once I was happy with the spots, the rigs were dispatched to their marks, baited with subtle food bait wafters. With the rigs positioned, I set about serving up some grub choosing to spawn out a mixture of boilies, pellets and hemp before settling in for the first night. So, uh, yeah, last night, a lot of fish activity. I mean, we had uh, a lot of fish crashing out between the hours of 11 and 3. Um, seemed like they'd moved out of this bay to my left, where they'd spent quite a lot of the time yesterday afternoon, and um, I was hearing them coming out over the spots. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, nothing's happened um, for me. Um, got a little bit of activity over some of the rods now. Um, but yeah, it's a quiet night really in retrospect. Um, went quite cautious on the baiting situation. I know they're tricky, didn't want to give them a big bed to begin with. Um, so, you know, tonight um, I'm going to probably look for a new spot um, for one of the rods, keep the other two on what bait I'd put out last night, um, unless, something, unless something happens this morning now. Um, but yeah, it was pretty quiet. So just sort of learning as we go along, making an assessment of the movements of the fish. Quite happy with the lines that I'm fishing. I know that they're moving along these lines on the back edge of the weed. Um, I'm fishing quite tight to this big band of weed that's running from the margins out to the slightly deeper water. Um, so yeah, we'll see how the, the day pans out and we'll make another assessment this afternoon when I redo the rods. So uh, yeah, just enjoying the morning now. Gorgeous autumnal carp fishing. Okay, so I chose not to fish last night. Um, reason being is the fish were there by midday, sort of 11 or 12 o'clock they turned up. I think we were probably here just a little bit after 12 yesterday. And when I checked the snag, there was two or three carp in there. Um, and then they just sort of more and more sort of turned up. And then they started to sort of grub around on the bottom. So here we are now, and I'm just about to put the rod back out. It's just after nine in the morning. So a good couple of hours, I've checked the snag, there's nothing in there, I can still see some food down there. Um, there's a couple of tench, a few perch from in around, um, but just about get the rig back in now. And uh, fingers crossed they turn up for lunchtime. Okay, so I've got the rod back out now, and um, I just slipped in the chesties and just walked it along the margin. I don't like going up and down too much because it clouds the water up and I can't, I don't have very good vis in the snag. So I've just done it the once. And, and I've walked the rod up with me and I've got a bit of foam on my hook and there's a balanced tiger on that and I literally, I, I get near where I am and I, I, I drop, I wind the leg core right up to the tip and then open the bail arm and I just gently drop it down and because of the leg core I can't feel the thud so what I do is once it hits bottom because I've got the foam in the, and the hook bait will be sitting up above the lead, I just bounce the lead just a couple of times, and as soon as I know it's on, you know, a really hard area, then I know it's fishing. There's a couple of fish that have just come back into the snag, um, and it's nice and hot and sunny today, so I presume they're going to use these sort of snags. And fingers crossed we get one. As you can see, the sun's come out, 
beautiful, really warm September afternoon. Fish have all moved in, they're in the bay now. Uh, started visiting the margin again. Um, this is the margin that I fished yesterday. I've had a bit more time today to have a look round. I've gone down the tree line, found a lovely bowled out area at the bottom of the gravel shelf there. Saw fish showing on it yesterday afternoon, uh, but it was too late. So today I've got in there, I've wandered down, got in through the reeds with my rod, um, through the back of the tree line, lowered the rod into the bowled out area, and I've walked back up the tree line in my waders, laid the line down the bottom of the shelf, and I've got the rod positioned just through this little gap here, facing the spot. Hopefully we'll get something uh, you know, on there this afternoon at some point. It looks really good, there's a lot of fish about now. They're just starting to visit the edges, it's nice and warm, perfect. Okay, so I first came up here wanting to catch one out of the edge. Um, so I stuck with that. They are visiting the edge, but there's a lot of leaf litter as well now. You can tell that they're more out in the pond. Um, so I didn't really need telling to ice. I sort of, you know, almost had to change my tactics and I brought some rods with me and a spawn. And um, I found an area out, um, probably about 70 yards out, 65, 70 yards out. Um, nice and silty to this one side and then, and then there was like definitely a real pronounced gravelly area, nice tap, tap, tap. So I just put two rigs on there and, you know, I was standing with Dan and we got some bait out. I put some spawns of like some small 12 mil boilies out there and then um, left the rods. So I now have one, I was now fishing three rods. Um, so I've got two out in the pond and then I've got one tucked still under the bush, um, just in case, you know, cause I had seen fish there. The margin trap failed to produce, so it was back to plan A and the open water attack. Autumn really can be a great time to fish out in the pond, especially when the weed begins to drop and the natural food begins its slow decline into winter. With the amount of fish activity that I'd heard the night before, it was hard not to feel confident for what lay ahead. activity last night, flat, calm, lovely autumnal night. Fish really started going for it after midnight, booming out, big heavy rolls and sloshes, felt electric. Um, so yeah, really good night for me. 4.30, left hand rods away. Um, blistering take, got out there, pulled into it. Really hard fight. Fish kited heavily round to the left. Um, got it in front of me gone round over the top of the other two rods fortunately, round to the, the back of the uh, tree on the right hand side of the swim, waded out, managed to get it under the rod tip quite quickly and uh, netted it, lovely looking common. Um, quickly uh, secured her up in the, the nice sort of deep cool margins, a um, little bit of a wind trickling in now to the, uh, to the edge, got that one sorted out, net back together. Um, just making myself a lovely cup of tea. I was gasping at that point and um, I'd been getting the odd liner on the, the right hand rod and, uh, and as soon as I've got the kettle on and um, yeah, that, that rod's away. Um, pulled into it, uh, kited right, quite an uneventful fight really. Uh, got it in the net quite quickly. Um, secured that one up in the margins um, just as it's getting light. Um, that was a lovely uh, mirror low 20s, nice scaly one. Um, yeah, so I definitely can't complain about last night. That was a, that was a right result. So yeah, well pleased.
it got to sort of early hours in the morning, three, four o'clock, and um, yeah, my, my one of the open water rods, um, it just literally, you know, just screamed off and then stopped. Uh, so I obviously quickly came out of the bivvy uh, and went over to the rod and just felt the line, it was ping tight, and then I turned my buzzer off just to stop the alarm. And uh, then it started taking more line off the clutch. I picked the rod up and straight away, I knew I was into a good fish and um, had a really lovely battle with it, like, you know, stripping me with line as it was getting closer and closer to the bank. I had a, a good ink and it was a nice sized carp. Um, it was really good fun actually, and it eventually, um, the, the, the carp had gone round to the right and I struggled a little bit sort of getting it back and, and then it came up and um, you know there was a nice sort of mid 30 common there which I was mega mega pleased with and it sort of shows you that you really got to react to certain things especially on these sort of waters you know they're fish they're, you know they are pressured um, lots of fish in here but, but yeah if you just react to that sort of that situation when it presents itself to you then uh, you can you can catch a carp and uh, yeah, I was well chuffed with that one. It was a, a really nice sort of uh, plump, sort of, uh, sort of chocolatey common you'll see. It's, yeah, it's, it's a stunning fish. Right, so the weather's really drawn in on us now. Um, got quite a brisk southwesterly blown up, low cloud base, quite a lot of fine drizzle. So I'm going to get the rods out for the night. Um, left them, left the lines in all day. Um, walking around the lake, chatting to some of the lads. A lot of them are fishing all throughout the day. There's no bites occurring, nothing's happening. So I'd rather let the fish have the freedom of uh, of, of the water in front of me in the baited spots. Um, didn't want the lines out there spooking them or whatever, so we're going to put the rods out just before, just before dark, and um, that seems to be what's working. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. Right, so uh, this is the spot that um, I'm fishing really tight to the to the back edge of this of, of this Canadian weed. Um, the spot was a little bit bigger than I'd, I'd hoped for, so uh, I want to fish it as tight to the back edge of the weed, keep my line lay good, um, I, and I don't want to be out in the middle of the spot with the rig. So um, this one's a little bit more tricky than the other two in the respect of I want to clip the back edge of that weed and I, need, I, I know the, the drop that I'm looking for and if I don't get it, it's coming back in. That's the one. Was that third time lucky? <laughs> we'll see. Yesterday, um, I had to leave um, to go to work. Um, I had a couple of big containers arriving and we need to organise a load of people there and it looked so good. And after catching that common, um, they, they just, there was definitely another chance. Even though I only had one rod out, it, it, it was looking so good. I didn't actually get back here till probably about half past seven, eight o'clock, by which point the wind had swung, um, the rain was savage. Um, everything was soaking wet and um, it, it, lo it looked, you know, really good conditions like, you know, for, a, for, for another carp sort of thing. Um, I, I would have liked to get my rods done cleaner. It's a nightmare, you can't see where they're landing exactly right, but, you know, I got a hard drop on my right hand rod and a soft drop on my left, so to me I was fishing correctly. 
and it looked cock on again. So it, we just thought naturally you hopefully get another one sort of thing. And um, yeah, that never happened. But this morning there's been um, some fizzing and flat spotting in the area and I've seen a carp over my rods. Uh, it's starting to get a few liners and stuff. So it's looking promising. With some welcome autumnal sun and a trickling southwesterly breeze pushing down to our end of the lake, it was no surprise that the carp popped up in front of us in their dozens. I quickly hatched a plan and despite it failing twice already and edge fishing looking more and more like it might have to wait until next spring, ever the optimist, I decided to give it one last go. This time though, I was going to have some help. Yeah, nice one. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing, nothing there, mate. Nothing there, mate. So no, you're right there. at the moment, mate. There's no fish about. Just trying to avoid that bit of crunchy gravel. Yeah. No, you're good, mate. There's no fish. Yeah, sweet. I'm on the edge of the weed, Ben, yeah? Yeah, mate. You're just on the edge of the sweet. weed, but your rod tip needs to go slightly a bit left. Yeah? How yeah, about that? That's it. That's it, mate. That's it. That's it. Am I over the end of the spot? That's it. Right, oh, it's going to go down. You'll feel it. You should feel it. Maybe come back a little bit, fractionally, to you. Oh. Got it? Yeah, nice, mate. That's it, mate. That's it. Give him a little bit of tucker, mate. We're done. Yeah, mate. That's it. You get yourself back. Right, I'll get along There's the no margin. There's no fish at the minute. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Thanks for no that. No worries, brother. No worries. There's fish about. Yeah. They like being here, don't they? Yeah, they like it. A little playground in those reeds. Yeah. Perfect daytime area, isn't it? Mm. All that lovely little canopy, reed beds. Yeah. Shallow shelf. Shallow here, but person back in that V. Yeah. When I was up the tree, that drops down. Drops mate. away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got a bit of everything. They've got everything. Yeah, yeah. The afternoon rolled by and the sun began its slow descent into the west, but the carp remained at our end of the lake, so much so that I decided to get another bait positioned in the edge, this time poking through a set of reeds that the carp seemed to like. Would we be relying on a night bite again? Only time would tell. Right, so I haven't really changed anything from a normal angling approach to, to most waters really. Um, gone in with a, a rig that I've got a huge amount of confidence in. Fishes really well, really simple, effective. It's basically um, a, a stiff-ish uh, balanced bottom bait rig. Fish helicopter style, double ring swivel there to give it a lot of movement. Obviously we're fishing with a, a, a stiff-ish hook link material there whipped up the, the shank of the hook, the tag end brought back quite a long D there, give it plenty of travel, finishing off with a um, hook ring swivel, give the bait 360 degree movement there, you can see it spins. We're fishing it on the bottom, balanced, um, so how this rig would sit is it would just 
very gently, slowly fall to the bottom. The hook would lay flat and the boilie just sits over the top of the hook like that. Obviously being balanced when it's uh, picked up by the fish, picked up and the hook just sits underneath the bait like that. Obviously in perfect position to, to prick the fish in the bottom lip. Um, fish it over a nice spread of boilies. Um, or you can even fish it, just shorten the hook link up slightly, fish it over a, a bit more of a variety, you know, if you're putting some bits and pieces in, um, which is, you know, how I've really approached it on here. I know, you know, this, this water definitely through the summer month from what I've gathered, um, you know, responds quite well to, to all the bits and pieces. But coming into autumn, you know, I like to give them a bit of, you, you know, something substantial, get them on the boilies. They seem to respond to them well at this time of year, long, long darkness hours and what have you. And they're, they're just, you know, they're having it out there. So um, I'm not really looking at fishing to a float with this type of presentation. Um, I'm dotting the bait about over a little bit of an area, get the fish moving about a little bit more and searching the, the food out. And then that rig will react really well to that sort of scenario. So um, yeah, effective rig big hook, uh, really efficient rig mechanics, nice and stiff, but it's still got enough suppleness about it so that it'll turn and, you know, react to uh, the feeding situation. So yeah, that's how we're going about business down on the Christchurch. Well, I've tried the left-hand side of the swim, and although we've seen fish in it, it's quite shallow. The birds seem to be picking up the bait. The carp are just not getting there at all. Um, there's a couple of carp that have been in the left-hand side of the snag, but they're just, they're literally just relaxing. They're not feeding. And there's, the, to the right of the swim, there's a much bigger, bigger bunch of like sort of underwater tree roots and stuff. And there's lots of like cleared off areas underneath of those. And I'm just going to just try my luck really, it's deeper, so I'm going to get in the water and I'm going to just wade around the corner and I'm just going to place my rig on the big glowy spot and from today I've noticed that um, that spot in particular is still glowing, there's not as many sort of leaves on the bottom, so what we're going to do is we're going to try, basically just sort of try our luck tonight, move the rod to the right hand side, which is, you know, and, we, and we'll see how we fare, hopefully we'll get a bite off that because I dearly, dearly really want to catch one out of the margin so badly. Fingers crossed we get one tonight. Ben is a really accomplished and experienced edge angler, and if anyone was going to get a bite out of the margins at Christchurch, it was going to be him. From what I'd seen over the past few days, it seemed the fish were reluctant to feed close in, and the first sign of those spots accumulating debris probably spelled the end to the margin fishing for that year, but it certainly didn't stop Ben from trying. For me, it was very much a case of repeating a proven formula in my swim, making sure to get the baits positioned absolutely spot on for that last night. Of course we were delighted with the three lovely carp that we've managed to catch up to that point, but who doesn't want to go out on a high? Well, it's the last morning, and um, yeah, it was a good night. Uh, got the rods out really well. Um, early hours, I've had to take off the left hand rod, which has been the rod I've seen most activity over, really. Um, and um, yeah, we've been given special permission to, to, to retain them for the morning. Uh, so I've got a nice linear in the bag. Um, I'm just going to have a few slurps of my tea. I'm going to shoot around and get Ben and uh, we're getting weighed up and uh, yeah, good end. 
What mate? <laughs> yeah. Yes, mate. Well Cheers, done, mate. Awesome. Nice one. Awesome. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Let's get it done, shall we? Oh, they can say. Twenty-seven eight. Huh? Oh, absolute cracker! Look at that, what corking fish, mate! That is wicked. Nice one, there. Yeah, mate. <laughs> I like it that a lot. <laughs> really am. Mate, that's a banger to finish on, honestly. Yeah, and it just. In classic autumnal conditions, classic old Oxford linear. Lovely, mate, lovely. Lovely. Oh, well, what a week. Great to be out with my mate Ben, um, helping each other out, sharing the moments and all that. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a, a great week. Everything you could want from an autumn carp session, really. Um, bit of camaraderie, bit of sunshine, bit of proper weather. You know, we, we got soaked. <laughs> it's been a fantastic week um, coming up to Oxford. It's the first time I've fished this place, and you can see why there's a you know a massive draw. Um, such lovely black scaly carp. It's been awesome. I've, I've loved every minute. Good company with everyone, and. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be coming back, definitely.